Uh, before we get into the uh, technical info, uh, we got to talk about the first two films very, very quickly. Sexy, sexy movies, both. Uh, but before we do that, um, I just want you to know at the time we're recording this, this is uh, July 10th, which happens to be the birthday of the legendary Man on the Silver Mountain, Mr. Ronnie James Dio. So we're going to do a shot to... Uh, to commemorate his birth and uh, we're, his we're busting legacy. the booze cherry here because Brandon said he wanted to hold off I now get why to Dio, to Dio. <sighs> the black and white makes the ass to mouth look so much sexier so let's uh, let's get through our technical info real quick and then we'll talk about um, the previous two films and the, the masterpiece that we're watching <laughs> right now so um the Human Centipede 3 was released simultaneously in theaters and on video in demand on May 22nd, 2015. you have any idea what the budget for this film was? Uh, man, I'm going to say at least $1.2 I couldn't find it. Oh. But there there has to be a little bit of money behind this yeah. because of the location. Which 500 guys ass to mouth. Sorry, I got a little hard just saying that. <laughs> Uh, the domestic gross, um, uh, not so good. I'm assuming this movie made all of its money on video demand. Oh, on yeah. DVD, but 200000 uh, No. It's domestic gross, $16,184. <laughs> it's international gross, 18976 So, yeah. This, One pervert in England went and saw it a lot. <laughs> uh, I'm sure that the, well, uh, the harsh nature and the reputation probably prevented it from being played in a lot of places. Yeah. Um, what do you think the IMDb rating is? Oh, God. It's, again, a 10? It doesn't matter. One. 2.7. Oh. Yeah. So, almost a three. <laughs> almost a three. Uh, what do you think the Rotten Tomatoes score is? Oh, God. 23. 19. 19. With an audience score of 11. Uh, <laughs> now, th this is the one that makes me laugh. The Metacritic score out of 100 is a five. <laughs> Like oh man! And uh, Google users, what do you think? Oh God, sixty. I won't even get thirty-seven percent. Okay, you know what? I'm kind of glad it's not exceptionally high. This uh, look at him being all romantic and like, just going in. You know, he's just what the he, fuck? He licked, he licked his finger. He's re he's respectful. <laughs> <laughs> this was Tom Six sat down and typed this out on a computer. Actually, no, he didn't. Oh, he did. He, he writes all of his script by scripts by hand. Oh, okay. So he took even more effort to write the scene <laughs> where where Dieter Lasser uh, finger fucks Brie Olson two what minutes the into the film. Ah, uh, like a like a gentleman that he is. Um, on Fat Tony's hit list, I don't have an exact number. Let's there's, just say a lot. Oh, there's a lot. And then they had that random dream sequence for no reason. Oh, we're, we're, we'll definitely talk about the, the, the dream sequence and the implications of a wound being penetrated uh, when it <sighs> happens. Um, on Steak Dick Eddie's Titty Tally, uh, now I've only seen this movie once, and I'm going into this blind. Uh, this has been several years since I've seen this, but to my memory, there are there is no titties in this movie, which is a shame because they have Brie Olsen, you know, the yeah. really famous porn actress, who was hired specifically. Now, there might be like a titty popping out of her shirt when she's blowing him under the desk. I don't know. Again, I can't. I started to watch this uh, last night uh, with my love and uh, was told, yeah, when you go up to Brandon's, he's keeping this DVD, right? Because they don't appreciate art. Uh, I, this isn't in my collection. My collection is pretty diverse and vast, but uh, yeah, the Human Centipede 3, which understandably is... Highly sought after. I, f I bought it for two dollars at Popcorn Video. Well, you got a good deal because you can't get it for under twenty bucks. Hell uh, yeah! Because it was produced in such low numbers, and um, there's only a a niche market for this to begin oh, with. Oh wait, he's taking offense at being called a Nazi. How he's dare a fucking you. cowboy. I'm, I'm gonna, gonna rape, rape you <laughs> to fucking <laughs> death. <laughs> All right, let's uh, let's do our second shot. Um, we're to gonna Lemmy. Do, to Lemmy. Yeah. What's his number? 
I have legitimate OCD. Not the kind of, oh, things aren't neat. If things become a ritual, then in my head something bad will happen if we don't follow them. So when he told me we weren't doing our shot, I thought he was going to start our shots off with something else. No, we're still we're still doing our, our traditional shots to the Holy Trinity. Dia, Lemmy, and Odin. Um, let's talk a little bit about the films that preceded this. Human Centipede 1 released April 28th, 2010. Super controversial film at, at the time. I think that would be probably an understatement, although being that you and I have seen probably... So much... Like, I heard so much the concept, and in execution, yeah, especially leaving the middle chick, the one who lives, I thought that was fucked up. I thought the doctor had some good moments, but I'm like, this is... Honestly, in gore and grossness, it didn't even, like, level up to society. Yeah, you're 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 absolutely correct. Dieter Lasser is the is the star of that oh, film. Oh yeah, both, he both, fucking both sells in, it. Both in marquee terms and in like terms of memorabilia. Uh, you know, Tiny memorability. Is this uh, better known. Oh uh, wow, there's some really racist. <laughs> we have subtitles on and just shot up with a hard N word. Uh, Tiny Lister's best role, if you remember, will be No Holds Barred. And No Holds Barred <laughs> as Zeus. You know who else is in that film? Who? Uh, Kurt Russ, not Kurt, Kurt Russell. Uh, oh fuck! Hold on. I've he just it. tried to bust me and then fucked it up. I We're two it. shots deep. <laughs> Come on, man. This is a professional podcast. His here. name is Kurt Fuller, and he was in Ghostbusters 2. You just got busted, kind of. <laughs> they just break his arm. Please, sir, no more. And I find it, it's the fat English guy with an American accent, I think, in this movie who has the Hitler mustache. And the cowboy Nazi Jew, German. It's it's such a it's such an interesting combination of things, and to me, that's what makes this movie kind of stand out from the other two. Having both the villains of movies that are movies in the universe of the movies, which which they they are the characters in they those the movies, char- but they are different characters in this. They movie. start this movie out watching Human Centipede Two, of which the warden's assistant is the star. And let's talk about that real quick because we might talk shit on how the first Human Centipede didn't deliver. Human Human Centipede Two is uh, <laughs> it which, fucking which, brought it. It was released October seventh, two thousand eleven, and it. Come on, motherfuckers! Oh, they were just chanting death rape. <laughs> you know, I've done some time in prison. Uh, full disclosure, I n- I was never on the main com. I was in minimum security when the riots broke out uh, on the main compound. Apparently, the homosexual community in one block got tired of being uh, robbed. And I heard... I was in the library at the minimum security. I heard over the radio... The hard F word for gay people are sticking everyone! The hard F word for gay people are stabbing everyone! So, uh, maybe well, stuff like this had, but not on this level. Well, uh, re- reality aside, um, I, I, th- I think the, uh, contextually, they're, they're going for hyper reality. D- hardcore in this film, which uh, this it, is a documentary <laughs> shot in real time. You can't tell me any different. Well, let's talk about the the second movie, yes, and how it was uh, definitely a heightened reality. Um, it it's a meta sequel, which I think was an absolutely smart decision. Yeah, because there's no way else to take it otherwise. The first movie takes itself seriously, and I and to me, I think that's one of the detriments to it. But the the sequel, which I'm also not a huge fan of, but it but it's worth a view. I think works because it takes the idea of the first movie and then has fun with it. If you call that fun, but yeah, they, they the, well, the staples and the blood, I think filming it in black and white was also a, a stroke of genius, but the most disturbing scenes in that movie, which the, the centipede the little guy makes is bad, but it's like the family <laughs> moments and his mom and it's just, oh, he's so mad. His blood pressure so high. As he screams and beats on a desk. I fucking love him. He's fucking great. R.I.P., man. Yeah, we're, we'll we'll talk about, a little bit about Dieter uh, Lasser as we continue on. Um, all three films are written and directed by a gentleman by the name of Tom Six. A very uh, interesting guy. Uh, born in the Netherlands, uh, Six was the 
original uh, director of the Dutch reality television series Big Brother, which has since gone on to become like this huge worldwide phenomenon. You know, Big Brother yeah. in America is still going on fairly certain. If not, then, you know, it, it went on for quite a while, and in the UK it's continued. So he that's his other claim to fame, but let's just be honest. It's fucking Human Centipede. It's the Human Centipede trilogy that has... And it's like a true trilogy. It's a meta trilogy, but, like, this has come out with the intent, the final sequence in the name. Do you think, because uh, he sort of talked about the possibility of doing a fourth movie. No. The end of this movie with Eric Roberts, which we will get to, is the best, what the fuck, ending of any movie ever. He's going to become president. <laughs> I fucking love it. And somewhere in here, listening from your other podcast, Wrestling Ruin, somebody pointed out that there was a wrestler, Gangrel, or something, somewhere in this movie. So let's keep an eye out and see if we see him. Gangrel is in this movie? And this was on, yeah, it was um, I'm, I'm Travis the, or Eric that popped up with that. But you weren't the one, because you talked about it. I've seen that. Oh, you were drunk, really drunk. Travis? Travis and Eddie? You Eddie? What did, I, what did I say? Travis? Eric. Eric. Sorry, Stank Dick, Ed, Eric. Sorry, Stank Dick. <laughs> I listened to the show. That's enough. Yeah. I love underbutt cleavage, like when the ass cheeks hang out. Right. No, no way. Wait. I've got to get a rough low job. Give it to me. You're rolling, You're rolling ass, ass cheeks. Tell me what it must be. I need my ball sack emptied before lunch. Yeah, you know, I tell that to my old lady all the time. You know, I'm not saying I don't get smacked in the mouth for it, but you know, I think you know, well, you got to keep a, a relationship romantic. Yeah, romance is very. Like, get over important. here, bitch, and empty my ball sack. <laughs> I'm gonna hunch on your cooter. <laughs> what? I don't remember what's in this jar. Hold on, holy shit! Oh, there, there's um, it's fucking uh, clits, isn't it? Uh, Tribe clits leaders are, in um, Africa chew uh, them. La or, it's la like dried out labia or something. Something like that. Yeah. What exactly is? Hold on. What is it exactly? Oh, God, his fucking mouth is so gross. I love it. He's such a great bat. Right. Dry, Dry clitorises. Clitoris. Yes. He's the real clit commander. Fuck you, Jason Muse. <laughs> okay, continue. Let's talk a little bit more about um, Tom Six. Despite making gross movies, or at least in the public perception gross yeah. movies, um, he's, he's known for his dapper attire, which you're actually going to see him later on in the film. He plays himself. But... He's known for constantly wearing, you know, a hat, a suit, and, you know, dress to the nines, but his, uh, the thing that separates him from just being, you know, GQ, to give it still a little bit of that sleaze, he wears, uh, as a pocket square, a, we a pair of, like, women's underwear is his pocket He's square. He's keeping it sexy. That huh? is... Game recognized game, yo. <laughs> that, that's, that's such a, um, a, I'm going to conform... Just enough to subvert yeah. the whole the whole scenario of what you know is generally considered classy. See, I don't wear like women's panties. I wear elderly women's bloomers <laughs> as a pocket square, and they have to be dirty, soiled. Yeah, because well, I'm getting very nervous. We've got to do our third shot. Let's to Odin. let's do our. Third I feel shot. the the his blood. Pumping through my veins. And, and then we're gonna, I'm going to read you some fascinating quotes from the director of this film. To Odin. To Odin. Uh, I love you, Taka. Taka, <clears throat> when you're watching a movie where a warden chews dry clitori. clitori. <laughs> Taka, where would, you're fat. Would, would clitori be the plural of clitorises? He says clitorises, but I don't know. Clitori sounds better. I'm part of the clitor. Clitor eye sounds like a maneuver where a woman drags her slit across your eyes. I God, I'm down. <laughs> I mean, if I gotta just, you know, if I gotta lose an eye and wear a pirate patch for the rest of my life, I'm it's like it's it's natural visine. <laughs> <laughs> Is Ben Stein still alive? That's a commercial. I think. <laughs> Dry eyes, try clitor <laughs> Oh, oh. Really heard it is the, the glorious prison hospital. Stress is for pussies. Stress is for pussies. <laughs> and a heart murmur. 
He does cocaine for the. I mean, I don't. Th- does he ever do drugs? Drugs in the movie? I don't know. That would have been a great time for him to just pop out a bump of coke. I, I, because I've only seen this movie once, I want to say at the end of the movie he does. There's like a drug binge when everything he thinks is going on. Because doesn't he like get naked and like go into like the the guard tower or something? Something. I I can't remember. But let's let's read off a couple of quotes from, uh, from Tom Six. I try to create original films. Why write stories that are done a hundred thousand times? Create something new. Push boundaries. Why else bother? Now, you can shit on these movies all you want, and deservedly so yes. to a point. But I, I can tell you, this dude is not ripping off someone else's. No, film. no, he's not. Uh, and another real thing I want to inject: they're shot well, like they're not just ham-fistedly, like the the shot composition. Editing is all pretty well done. Um, have you ever seen the movie Feeders? It's a 90 shot on shittio movie. Is that where they're kidnapping women to feed them food to make them fat? Mm, I rented that at the no. Morristown Library. And it was a horror movie. Fe- Feeders is like a it's like a sci-fi horror movie, but they have like little puppets that play aliens. No. Anyways, for that that movie fails upwards. It's like very entertaining, but. This movie, like these movies, could be of that kind of quality. Is the point yeah. I'm trying to make? Um, when you get a premise like this, it doesn't necessarily have to be shot well. Uh, the The ridiculousness of it could probably propel it uh, to a, a level of credibility yeah. in terms of like reputation. But I, that adds a level of chutzpah, if you would. To, uh, to to the credibility because it is a nice looking film like all three of them uh, especially the second one I the like second the, one the black and white cinematography the weird he gets a little bit more um, experimental with that he wants boiling water this, this is a, a ridiculous way to uh, uh, to does, I can't remember if the guy dies or not from this I, but he definitely gets fucked up because yes. they're waterboarding him but they do it with boiling, boiling water. water. And the governor's on his way. I thought that she is hot. I'm just saying. I, I have a story. We'll, we'll actually talk about her a little later on. Uh, for, um, first-hand account of someone's uh, first-hand account of interactions So it's with a her. second-hand account. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we call that in grammar. I'm going to take another shot just because I can now. We've got our traditional three out, so now it's time to get... You fucked up. All right, Will um, you be attending the executioner? You fucking know. <laughs> I never go to these wellness execution by injections. Those pussies. He, he's so good. He is. Just, he, okay, I talked about the water skier and the... the Sleepaway Camp episode. It's like if that person could act, and this motherfucker is at eleven in every scene in this movie. And always. Okay, before I go on with the with the next quote, is there a version of this movie that could work played straight? I'm going to say no. No. Uh, well, maybe. Okay, here's a. Okay, you can't have the five hundred people sewn together ass to mount, but something this extreme. But it would have to be like in a Russian prison or South. This wouldn't be, this wouldn't fly as an American prison movie because yeah, American prisons are not great, but they're not eyes for eyes. <laughs> oh god! First real real moment of like just needlessly graphic violence. Can you imagine? And like the towel just keeping teeth the teeth for teeth. teeth. <laughs> booty hole for booty hole. Yeah, the the, the, sa- right. the sound design is very good. Just the, the little <laughs> the gurgling. The, well, and then just the the scrape of the nails on the on the table. That's good stuff. You know, that's something I also give credit. The the other best horror movie everybody hates. It has amazing sound design. Is the remake of Nightmare on Elm Street. I I won't I won't disagree with oh, you. Oh yeah, that face peeling, boiling water. So okay, I get a rash. From too much political correctness. I love it when films dare to have political incorrect ideas 
Um, in the the times that we live, you know, we're we're sort of in a another. I don't want to say that we're in like another puritanical like period in history, but we're we've definitely walked back a little bit in terms of like what is allowable and, and some of that is to a positive yeah end. I think that's what I was going to say a lot of this is for the better when it's needless victim hunting like there are people that want to be victims you're doing something that offends me you know racism homophobia transphobia these are legitimate things that shouldn't just be mocked but like I'm sorry I don't what? I don't want to give film and art sort of carte blanche should do whatever they want to do but in the same vein I kind of do because it's not if you're if you're doing this to be mean spirited and and you have your you have a direct message of hate that's that's one thing but if you're doing this for art which this this, this film is, the, the, for whatever you want to call it he he had art on his mind he wanted to shock and it's a with a wink and a nod and hey we got Eric Roberts this is a real movie for a minute all right We'll talk about Eric Roberts a little later on, um, but a somewhat of a fallen fallen titan in terms of, of acting because he has to be in movies like The Human Centipede. But you know what? We're, we're going to drink a shot to Eric, Eric Roberts. Roberts. The best of the Roberts. No, there's Second Emma. only to Jake. Well, yeah. That's what I say Emma Roberts because... I don't normally like younger looking actresses, but Emma Roberts could get it. She's more attractive than um, her fucking aunt. Fuck Julia. Julia Roberts. Yeah, I Eric like, I, Roberts more attractive. <laughs> I, I love redheads, but Julia Roberts is too gummy for my taste. I, guess I mean, she could get it in Pretty Woman. There's no denying that. Well, she wears a push-up bra. That, that helps everybody. Well, there's also... I mean, she's a fine actress. Let's not just... Not, I, but just writing her... I'm, 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 I'm sorry. I'm going to disagree with you. I, uh, I think that Julia Roberts is wholly overrated as an actress. Then you haven't appreciated her oeuvre in the cinematic <laughs> history. But we won't go down that line. Uh, Aaron Brockovich is great. Is that I, the name of the movie? That is that is the name of the okay, movie. Okay, I, I, I was afraid I got the last name. She she played a a, a, a bitch. Answering violence. In life? Yeah. And, and in a movie, uh, I don't think that was hard to re- for her to reach for. I'm sure she's done, you know, she, I'm not saying she's even a good person as a celebrity. I'm just saying she's not a bad actress. I, I I think uh, c- compared to a lot of her contemporaries, uh, okay. she was a bit. She's over no blown. Meryl Streep. Well, no, nobody is. Meryl Streep is not even a Meryl. Streep. I saw something online where somebody's like billion dollar movie idea: Meryl Streep and Dan- Daniel Day Lewis play each other in a movie <laughs> until the Swinton plays them both from the future. I'm I would oddly enough be uh, down for Take that. Take my money. Take my money now. He didn't even bother. Like his hair's not long because it's a thing. Like Eric Roberts just didn't. He's always waste, he didn't want to waste eight ninety nine on a great clip for this watch movie. Him walk. Tell me he's not drunk. He is drunk as fuck. No, I I honestly thought because I got I got about up to here before Sarah's like fuck you fuck you <laughs> fuck yourself. <laughs> he's eleven. I'm telling you, the man. This is, he gave his life for you art. You imbecile because, communist zombie cunt. <laughs> <laughs> this role took five years off his life. Oh man! You know, you her panties are so moist. You right shouldn't. Now. You shouldn't. I mean, she, look at her. She's fucking diddling herself. Homosexual shithole with Cuban cigars up to your throat. Don't mess with Bill. Bill Boss. Boss. I love that's his name. It's like American American first you, name. It's his do, job title last do name. Do you do you think that that is a reference to the Big Boss? No, I think it was to be intentionally Americanized and dumbed down because I don't the know. Netherland people are just just so derisive of America, and for the most part, they got a lot of good point. But having a German with the most Americans and. He's still just <laughs> still yelling at this governor as he left, thrusting his crotch. Like I'm not when I'm only half joking. This movie took six months off his life with his blood pressure and just how hard he had to get. The other guy, he's mainly just having to do wide-eyed reacts. This is a cakewalk for him, and then like smiling and nervous. 
castrate them all. That comes up later great in the movie. You know, there there is the idea in acting from a director perspective that, like, you instruct your actors to go as big as possible because it's easier for you to tell them in rain the next take in. to rein it in and do and go smaller than it is to go bigger because if you start at, at 10 and bring if you start at Nicolas Cage <laughs> yeah and come down to uh, a fucking you know I'm trying to think of a middle ground and I'm, I'm Nick up, Nolte Nick Nolte I don't know. He's pretty. He can take out. Um, that's still high, but it's not Nick Cage high. You bring it down to a Nick Nolte, Let's and then it goes honest. to a, no. You take it down to a Gary Busey, <laughs> then a Nick Nolte, and then like a Ben Stiller. Ben Stiller's a good middle ground. Yeah, a good middle ground. Okay, another quote from Tom Six. I'm totally against cutting films. Film is an art form. The human centipede is made for a horror audience. It's like I made a comedy and they take out all the good jokes. Honestly, yes. That's a great point. You, know, you can shit. Haha, you drop your glasses, blind boy. Yeah. I'm getting old. You can shit on, on this movie easily. But the ideas behind it, I'm entirely in favor of. For the simple fact that during the 1980s, we were censored whether they want to say it was censorship or yes. not it was censorship they they hid it under the board of self censorship but but horror movies in particular were hit so fucking hard sorry he is te- giving a speech to uh, about how he's going to castrate all of the or the prisoners and return them to peace loving pussy schnitzels <laughs> it's our tattoo was prisoner two nine seven. I'm gonna castrate you. <laughs> Congrats! Congrats! <laughs> and take him to the special. They cell. just can. Apparently, you don't need cords. It's the warden's. Uh, you know, it, it's not even has to be done on the down low in like longest yard or something where like they pay prisoners to kill each other. Whatever. Yeah, yeah. That one dude's into it. Fuck yeah. Let's, That's my dude. Let's talk a little bit about censorship. Yes. Um. During during the eighties, it was probably at its worst. But at the same time, like some of the some of the horror films that we love, probably benefited in some ways from being censored. So it is sort of like a weird thing where you can RoboCop. Let's talk about RoboCop. RoboCop is the perfect example where Paul Verhoeven went so far over the top in that boardroom scene where the guy's getting shot by Ed Two Hundred Nine, and he went intentionally over to make it comedic. To make it comedic. And the film censors made him cut that scene, and they made it more effective on a visceral level because he was going for comedy, and but they didn't realize that. So in cutting the movie, they made it more effective rather than because your mind is filling in the blanks rather than like every moment of but, a bullet hitting him being comedic. But just like Tom Six said, it's art and it's artist expression. Paul Verhoeven wanted that to be comedic. I agree. They, and I, I agree with you. But in the, in terms to a general in, film going audience, there for an action film. In terms of it being a an impactful like holy fuck moment, they made the movie more. The they made the movie worse in good terms. Yes. I, so I, I I love they they failed upwards. Exactly. So censorship can like can, this movie's can, not censored. It is not. We're um, about to watch a man get castrated from behind. <laughs> <laughs> and then the testicles later served as a meal. Um, pretty recently, I, I watched a movie called Censor. I actually told you about it. Oh, this. yeah, yeah. You said it was good. Um, it's about a British film censor. This, like, sort of repressed, Isn't like... is that, like, Evil Ed, or what's the name of the movie? There's a movie like that where he, this one film censor guy, or editor guy, had edited a lot of horror movies. That may, be, that may be Evil Ed. Evil I have, Ed. I, I, haven't, I haven't seen that in, in years, but it's a, it's a woman. She's, you know, sort of like in her mid-30s, like sexually repressed. And she watches this movie, and it like freaks her out, and it sort of awakens memories in her about her long-lost sister who okay. had gone missing. And she starts to like unravel like the parallels. Like, is... Is this movie about the? <laughs> We're talking about censorship, and he just cut off a man's balls, asked him to be served lunch, and now he's wiping his face he's with ba- the blood. He, he's bathing in it and ah! screaming. Every scene has to have a scream. Have him stitched up. <laughs> I mean, damn! No, no more babies for you. 
<laughs> He's a nice pushy schnitzel. <laughs> and then it cuts to the American, American flag, flag and it rattles. Don't, <laughs> don't tread on me. <laughs> uh, but anyways, back to censor. Um, I, I, I highly recommend it. Um, it, it sort of shows uh, how... Sort of like the satanic panic era of film that that like people could get so wrapped up in the minutia of like what is and what is not socially acceptable. Uh, I'm sorry, sorry, we're sir. getting the most romantic blowjob of all time. I can't do it with in Dwight in the room. Yeah, you can. Go ahead, for Christ's sake. Just give it me, Jay. <laughs> Chopping a cigar. Look, at, there's a smile. I should say, why does he look so upset? Dwight is my pet. <laughs> I mean, that, life is good right now. Ah. Oh, uh, this is Whoa. one of the good. good. Oh, oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And his face is dead. <laughs> now he's like licking the air. <laughs> this. And, oh, oh, here we go. Stamp. This actually works perfectly with my final quote from Tom Six. I don't like happy endings in films, only at massage parlors. <laughs> Which brings us to our star of this film that we've already just lauded, you know, how great he is. Dieter Lasser as Fuck War- Daniel Day Lewis. As Warden Bill Boss. Um he was in the Human Centipede One, and I guess he's technically in part two. But it's only clips from footage. the original. Yeah. Do you think uh Having sort of like all the the characters from part one come together and, and, and go ahead, come swallow on, it. swallow it. I didn't get your asshole. I didn't get your asshole. Oh, father, out of prison for no. nothing. Swallow it, bitch. Swallow up. This is this is not okay, yo. She know what she was getting into. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh my god. I'll just love this okay, I guess there are no kids. Oh, he has his gun. He has his gun. Can I please whole- have a candy for candy for the taste? Help her see he is romantic. He's giving her candy. And it, she's eating and the, the, the fucking clips. clitorises. <laughs> Gross, this is salty. Back to work office slut. Well Back to work office slut. You know, this kind of <laughs> Misogyny and the, work, the workplace gonna, has no place in the workplace. We're not. Sorry. We're gonna drink to the romance of the. I, we've. I've already got our shot poured to office romance. To office romance. Here is the fine dining meal of testicles. Who everybody's just with kale. There's no sauce. Come on, man. Work on the presentation. Gordon Ramsay would be upset. Well, if if as as uh, someone, salt and pepper. As someone who uh, was a cook in a steakhouse through my formidable years, I can tell you, if you cook it properly, you don't need all the accoutrement of you sauce. You worked and- at a fucking Western Sizzling, wasn't it? What was it? <laughs> it was a Western Sizzling. Yeah, y'all use garbage meat and threw it on buffet. Not but a, I, not, there are a lot. Hey, if it weren't for that restaurant, I literally would not be born. That's where my waitress mom met my father. Wow. Do you want to know something crazy? And uh, I didn't know this about us as yeah. having a parallel. My dad, my my stepdad, and my mother met at Western Sizzling, and that's that's how they got together. Well, see, we had that's we're soul brothers. <laughs> we're Western Sizzling brothers. <laughs> Just be more best friends. Let's go do karate. Let's go do karate in the basement. And just yep. There you go. Now she's got a strawberry to get the taste of old man, old German semen. Listen, you know, with all the bratwurst he's eating, it's got to be extra salty. And then the dried clitorises. I, all I'm saying is that if you're going to cook someone's testicles, there is a way to do it. And where you do not need a lot of sauce to enhance the flavor. Well, okay. First, I think you have to brine them. <laughs> True. And then Absolutely. salt, pepper, and the, the secret ingredient to any kind of meat cooking is a little pinch of garlic. And he did want a medium rare, which I'll get. Any, anything beyond medium... Oh, you're uh, you're ro- that animal died for uh, nothing, and you should be ashamed. A uh, shout out uh, to my my buddy Judd Kelly, one of the one of the OGs. This Saw, podcast torture castration will be the final solution. Needs to be a t shirt. <laughs> I need to have. I might get a tattoo. <laughs> a torture castration, I have the, to, especially the German talking about the final solution. I, I know at the time that they made these, that uh, DVD was the the preferred uh, medium. Medium. 
but yeah. if you're going to own these yeah. films, like it should be in in a beautiful 4K. Uh, for- Did they make a 4K Blu-ray? <laughs> I'm lucky to find this on DVD for two dollars. There, need, there needs to be four 4K Blu-ray 3D of all these films. Yes. Criterion, get on that shit. Yes, Criterion. How dare you exclude the works of Tom? They Sitch. really did a Salo one. <laughs> they did a Criterion Dude, correction. Okay, Sal- all right. I, I work, I'm going to give a shout out to a guy I work with. His name is Trevor. He's a nice kid, and I mean this in, in all sincerity. Very nice kid. Um, grew up in a, uh, a you know a Christian household. Uh, he's a little bit on the repressed side, but he's found these extreme films, and it's sort of like his gateway drug into like experiencing like the worst aspects of life. And on a semi daily basis that I work with this kid, he's like, "Hey, what movies?" do you recommend? And I've given him like legitimate recommendations, but the people at our local uh, store uh, where you can buy DVDs and They have the Slaughtered Vomit Doll trilogy. Good on them. At the rhythm section. And they have been giving him the most fucked up recommendations. Antichrist, Sallow, um, a Serbian film, and he he's bought these movies, but he but he hasn't watched them, so that he's still clinging on to like what little dignity he has. I've got to take a second to aside, make an aside. I remember going to eat Chinese food at the restaurant in uh, the Morristown Mall, and Brandon's like, "I'm not playing with you. Don't watch the movie Antichrist. I'm not recommending. Don't ever watch it. And no, it's not because the gore. And I didn't listen." Because if I hear the king of horror movies say, don't watch this movie, of course I am. Over, over, don't watch Antichrist. Now, over time, I have I have come to a really appreciate... How much you hate women? Yes, how much you hate women. Right. It's what I've, the movie's about. I've come, I've come to really appreciate how how good of a director. Oh, he's fucking him. Lars von Trier. He's amazing. Um, from we're going to drink a shot to Lars von Trier. Yes, I was just, oh. From from a first perspective of knowing how to frame shots, in, score in, them, do original. Have he has a look, but he does it. Every movie's not the same. But his happiest movie involves the planet Earth being destroyed. I love Melancholia. Melancholia is fucking amazing. Don't get, get me wrong. You get Kirsten Dunst with her tits out. Oh, childhood a, dream. For an extended period. But it's it's the story of a woman who... Goes insane on her wedding night. Or has a breakdown. She's a bridezilla. Yes. Who decides that, like, you know what? Cheating on my husband because the world's going to end is okay. And I know there's a little bit more to the movie than that, but this kid that I, I'm sort of like, you know, trying to, to tutor in the ways of horror has been given these extreme films. And when I hired him, one of the things he told me, he's like, and he's, he's got a real southern accent. He's like, well, I just paid a bunch of, co- about a couple of hundred dollars for the faces of death box set. <laughs> yeah, what are you talking about? And I'm yeah. like, do you mean Traces of Death? And he's like, no, Faces of Death. That's the ripoff, but I got a lot of good things hey, to say about faces it. Faces of Death is the one that hit it big. <laughs> All right, okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm flipping. You're them, flipping. It's Traces of traces Death. Traces of Death. All the same, I was amazed that he knew about both of them, about both of them let alone uh, Traces of Death, which is the... I saw on VHS back in the day, yeah. movie time video, because they didn't have faces of death. They had traces of death because they were the... Showbiz video had faces. And also used to have two little certificates of sitting through faces of death four. Is that the one they always show at the theaters? You got a certificate of sitting through? I believe so. I can't wait for the remake of faces of death. I, to Trevor. I, to Trevor. I too know a good kid, Trevor. But I won't give him Sladen too much credence because he's also dating my middle stepchild so therefore by default he's a piece of shit but I make him download every episode and he usually enjoys our antics well good for Trevor I mean I'll bury him in a shallow grave so that you know he'll feel did he just did he just fuck him or something he just like choked the guy he had castrated for a while cause dude talks shit like his whole face, you know, I hate to say this, I love my grandmother, but in the face, he looks a little bit like my grand, my grandma Nyleen. 
Um, and that was the good grandma who I love. Um, shout out to my racist grandmother, Dorothy, <laughs> who looks just like Gargamel from Smurfs. <laughs> but she's the one that lets you watch a lot of horror movies, right? She Pick did because she had horrible judgment and a was really... a bad person. As a really, really terrible person. <laughs> But you know, still, you got some. She's, she's still, still alive? she's still alive. She's still alive, and the devil is waiting. <laughs> <laughs> it's a terrible thing to say. Oh man. <laughs> uh, oh god! Look at the the guy's just. He's like the accountant, just looking. Oh man! All these medical. Well, let's just stitch him ass to mouth. We only have to feed the front one. I love this. Oh, excuse me. Is this the dream sequence? No. This, he's stumbling around drunk at work with a fucking M16. That's the best job on earth. Let's let's talk a little bit about the sidekick. Yeah, this is Lawrence R. Harvey. He's the creepy bald dude. Um, he plays the role of Dwight Butler, well, sex machine, a sex machine that you've also seen in Human Centipede Two. Um, his his background in acting is he's he's had several roles, but in snuff films, killing <laughs> killing hookers. <laughs> None of them have been officially released. Yeah. We're waiting on an official release by 2025. Come on, Chow Factory. <laughs> <laughs> it would probably be Vinegar Syndrome that would okay. probably release these uh, these dirty the films. They're into like the really, really obscure I'm going to shoot oh. all the malignant cocksuckers. Have you ever seen The Editor? It's it's uh, it's an Astron 6 movie. point of living. No. Okay, it's made by the same people who made Man Board. Father's and Day. Father's Day, uh, The Void, um, more the recently, Void Psycho, up. Gore Man. One of my favorite movies. It's, it, it's creeping into my top ten of all time. It's not there yet, but it's one or two more watches I'm, away. I'm going to say that uh, The Editor is probably the best movie they've made. Like as a movie? As or? a movie. Oh, okay. Um, because it's sort of a spoof of like Italian Jello movies, uh, like Bava. And, oh, I uh, fucking love Jello movies. And um, Dario Argento. It's really, really harping on um, those type of movies. And it's a, it's a comedy but it really does nail the aspects of those type of films that really make them special. Um, but um, Lawrence Harvey plays a character in that movie. He's sort of like a priest, and it's a brief, brief role, brief small part. But I, but I really, really recommend it. I think you really enjoy this. Uh, I love all of the Astron Six movies, so I can't really. Say yeah, anything. I've not seen a one I haven't liked. Can't say anything negatively about them. Um. He appears in a movie that I have not seen, but I absolutely have to track down. And um, this is strictly from the uh, me checking out the IMDb that I even knew about this movie. But uh, let me regale you. Okay. It's a film called Attack of the Adult Babies. And here's the synopsis. And tell me this I'm doesn't... I'm sold already, but right, yes. Here's the synopsis. This will double sell you. Three family members break into a remote country house to recover secret documents, but discover a cult of wealthy adults dressed as babies inside <laughs> with, with sexy nurses as their caretakers. Now tell me that doesn't make you like, fuck, I don't care if this movie... I'm canceling <laughs> plans. I'll skip family members' funerals. I gotta see this movie. <laughs> I have to own this. If this is not in my collection, I feel like I've wasted my life. I I grew this stupid mustache for you to like, and it's a Hitler mustache. You're a vile, a sadistic, vile asshole. Get out of mixes. my face! You, you malignant, malignant midget. midget. Sorry to use the hard M word. Okay, let's be real. It's the medium M, M word. It's not I, polite. I don't use it. During our Leprechaun 3... Uh, watch along. I joked with Brandon how I was going to, but I couldn't do it because Burn Troyer is so awesome. I, Not Burn Troyer, <laughs> fucking, <laughs> fucking Leprechaun dude. Oh fuck, I'm I'm kind of drunk. Willow, right now. Willow's so awesome that I'm like little person, so I didn't. Oh fuck, Wicket and um. It's, it's leprechauns all that matters. Oh, man, I'm I'm pretty drunk. I'm gonna quietly Google it while we continue watching. Warwick Davis. His Warwick name Davis. Davis. His name is Warwick See, Davis. See, Brandon's better. I just saved your fucking life. Has he like eleven? And this bitch, all she has to do is look mildly concerned. Which, as a conventionally attractive white woman in America, I believe that's her face anytime she goes out in public. 
Okay, let's let's move on to what really makes this movie special: the sexiness. There, there's two aspects of this movie that sort of separate it from like eventual, like uh, the uh, conventional type of movies. In that, this is both a prison movie and it's both a body horror. Ooh, movie. Ooh, I got let's you. Let's do our top five prison movies. You want me to start out with my yeah, number five? Yeah, you go ahead and start out while I'm pulling up my notes. All right. We're going to do our prison movies first. Okay. Our top five prison movies. Number five, I have... And these are in particular order. I put my, I took careful consideration to put mine in the order. Brands aren't, but mine are. My aren't. number one is definitely my number one. Oh, but, yeah. But that's beyond, me, too. But beyond that, you could probably rearrange One and two are both definitely. Anyway, yes. Number five. More clits, though, real quick. <laughs> mm, they're the great stress of leaving candy. I'm not going to lie. If somebody offered me a dried clit right now, I'd probably take it. I want a warm clit attached to the love of my life. So you thought I was going with any kind of random <laughs> slut, but I don't cheat. You're a, anyway. You're romantic. I am you're, too romantic. You're romantic. I need my nutsack emptied by lunch, bitch. Black chicken slave N word. <laughs> Drunk with an M60 Mother about the busy baby, baby raping, raping Mexican, Mexican low lives. <laughs> Mikago, I don't even want to say that because in case it's something really horrible in Spanish. Know. All right, my number five okay. in top five prison movies is is Brawl and Cell Block ninety nine. High five! That's my number five. Oh, that, that was the one I kind of consider the cheat because there's a lot of it that's not in prison. It's it's great. Yeah, it's Vince Vaughn. It's his uh, best movie. It, I'm sorry. It, he's so good at it. It's kind of like Mayhem. Yeah, you told which, which which we just did on the podcast. If you'd have told me Vince Vaughn could be a badass in a movie. I'd have laughed at you. Well, I mean, he's like over six foot tall, but he a lot of his performances has been on the more comedic yeah, side. Yeah, so they. But but dude, when push comes to <laughs> shove, shove, like he becomes like he's sort of like John Wick in prison. Yes. yes, that's this movie. Um, I can't say enough nice about it. Um, it's a hard hitting, incredibly violent film. Uh, if you haven't seen it, it's done by the same guy who did um, Dried Across. That was Concrete. another good one, even though and it has the Jew hater Mel Gibson. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good, you know. Have you, have you seen uh, the Western that he did? And oh God, I'm fucking blanking on what's called. Um, no. Give me a second. I saw the Santa movie Mel Gibson did. No, not Mel, Mel, Mel Gibson. The guy, the, uh... No, you're thinking of Kurt Russell. <laughs> no, no. Mel Gibson did a, an R-rated action movie as Santa. Oh, yeah. It's like Fat Boy or something, something like, like that. Something like that. Yeah, fuck. I can't think of what it's called. Fat Man. <laughs> fat Boy is the Simon Pegg movie. Run, Fat Boy, run. But, yeah, Fat. Fuck. Um, anyway, the Western the director did... Oh my god, I'm blanking on the. Uh, um, it's got Kurt Russell in it. It's Bone Tomahawk. Yes, Bone yes, I've Tomahawk. Seen it. Sarah, sh- big shout out to Sarah. One of the things when we first started dating, she's like, oh my god, I've got a movie you love. Because we were talking about like Tombstone. She's like, you like t- Kurt Russell, westerns, and horror movies. We're going to rent this. It, it is, it's a western. To the last 10 minutes. Yes, and then it becomes like a fucking snuff film. <laughs> it is fucking amazing. It, and. I know that like political. Oh, here's the hold on. Here's the dream sequence. I will pot it all of you. No! You're not the governor. You're the warden. You can't do shit. Hey, shout out to the warden at Northwest when we, the horticulture people did his yard and stuff. Man, that motherfucker cooked us steak and ribs. Good, Good job. For, Good for him. No testicles cut off that I knew of. <laughs> So, good job, American penal system. Well, I deserve to be there, though. There now. were. I there could. were testicles served. They were just of a lesser human being. I mean, child molesters, I don't care. I could have a severe attack. Under the stress, I could have a severe attack. I really don't think that. That would kill me. This is great. This is, hold on. This is where they just, like, <laughs> day of the dead, fuck him up. Oh, yeah. Cut them all. In, in you know, Zeus Lister looks good in a cowboy hat. Rest in peace, my buddy. He's uh, he's no longer he's no longer with us. Oh, Zeus. He uh, he passed away last year. Uh, year Twenty oh. twenty was like the year of like everybody dying. I and, think I knew that now. And some people, you know, died from COVID and you know, RIP cancer we, uh, or but, just existence. But our but the gentleman we're talking about right now... Hold on. They Lassie. cut a hole in this man's kidneys. Death rape. Death, Death rape. He's this... Tom Six is a genius or a <laughs> sick, 
sick serial killer level pervert who found a healthy way listen to work out his demons like Dexter did. Listen, like if you're going to fuck somebody, <laughs> shit feels good. If you're gonna fuck a shit a shit human pu- person to death. This guy's the one to do it to. He's he's entertaining, but he's a terrible human being. Yes. So if you've got a fucking orifice for hate, why reasons, didn't this happen to this Bill Cosby probably, before he left prison? Okay, let's let's <laughs> d- divert. <laughs> fucking Bill Cosby got out of prison on a fucking technicality, and the Tiger King's still rotten. <laughs> <laughs> no, he kind of deserves to be there, but just not for like trying to put a hit on he Carol didn't, Baskin. He, what he did was way, way. He less didn't rape important. women or men. No. Or he didn't rape anybody. The Tiger no, King. Let's Tiger King probably tricked some men into like intercourse. He had his little nugget golden boy, <laughs> golden nugget boy. Okay, we're gonna stop. <laughs> we're gonna go to num- your number four because both our number fives were Brawl and Cell Block Ninety. My number this four, movie's only so long. My number four is Fortress, starring Christopher. Oh, Lambert. that's a good one. It's a dy- uh, sci-fi dystopian future prison movie directed by Stuart Gordon. Um, this movie could have been really bad, but it was done really well. It's done really well, and considering the budget of the movie. Um, it's got Jeffrey Combs, it's got Tom Toll. The secondary cast is really good. Um, fuck the guy from uh, that '70s show, Kurtwood Smith, who's yeah. the villain in RoboCop. He plays Great. an augmented... bitches leave. A bitches leave <laughs> the best, the best one liner, one liner in a movie ever. I'll, period. I'm no argument. Period. To, Kurt, to bitches leave. We're bitches, not doing it to Kurt Ward Smith. We're doing it to bitches leave. To uh, his character in Robocop. No, I'm just doing it to the one liner. I'm going to give you one last chance. If you don't like what you hear, then I'll quit myself. Ah, oh, man. I, All right. Robocop is so fucking good. And a shout out to our <laughs> friends at Central Cinema. They're showing it next week. I work. It's all fucked. It, it's Fuck your job. I'll quit, man. Leave, leave, leave my family destitute. No, no, seriously. If, Fortress, they, if they were good people, they'd be they'd working themselves. They wouldn't rely on you. They'd be self-sufficient. But, yes. Fortress, I'm joking, by the way. I am joking. Don't quit way. your jobs for movies unless you don't have a family. If you're single, I quit a job to go to a concert before. I worked at... Uh, was it Black Sabbath? No, no. It wasn't even that. It wasn't even on that level. It was a what's the furniture Berkline. I worked at the Berkline Furniture Factory. By the way, we've got Tom Six on screen. Tom right now. Six on screen. He's the he's the guy who's totally down to help real life people get so nasty to mouth. Apparently, he's he's fine with these people. They're basic, criminals taking uh, the, the human idea, cent- They reference South Park in human centipede. And this pad. is this is previous to the human centipede episode actually debuting. Is it? Is it? I don't know. <laughs> I don't think so. No. But anyway, I want to get to my number four. Number four. Let me let me know. Um, I can't think of his name. Who, who's Venom? Oh, Tom, Tom Hardy. Tom Hardy. Bronson. Bronson is my great, number four. Great movie. Not great. Charles Bronson, but a different Charles No, he, he was named something else, but they called him Charles Bronson. He was about British Britain's most dangerous prisoner, who I don't think kills anybody in the entire movie. He just whoops everybody's ass anytime he's given a chance. Um, Tom Hardy, who... I'd have I'd have unprotected gay sex with. I'll just be real. I don't want to fuck him though. I want to be him. <laughs> don't, I, despite the fact that he's been given some shit roles over the course of his career, he's so good. And if um, he's even good in the fucking Star Trek movies, then as a young Picard, he is. That movie's terrible. The movie's terrible. It's an even number. Wait, Nemesis. it's an odd number movie. Nemesis would be an even. But the, the odd numbered Star Trek movies are good. No, because Star Trek Four. I know you're right. It's, it's, the, the, it's, it's an odd it number because. Even. But for for the purposes of that movie, anyway. I'll say odd. <laughs> yeah. Either way, Tom Hardy's great in his role. The movie sucks, Donkey Dick. Yeah. Um. There has been a big rumor for for a time that he would be the next James Bond. And if he were the James Bond, well, that this next sub-series would be probably a trilogy, and it would take place during the 60s, and it would be sort of 
different than the films that we have right now. I'd suck a homeless dude's <laughs> dick to see those movies. But it would take place during the 60s, and it would be more in line with the Roger... I'm sorry. The, the, I almost said I'll Roger drag Moore. you out here. The, the Sean, Sean Connery, Connery era of James Bond, and I'm totally on board for that. I know a lot of people are totally on board for Idris Elba, and I can't even say Dude, that. Dude, I'm, I'm down for Idris Elba. I'm not, I'm not 100% against it, other than the fact that he's too old to... to do to do for, a lot. He for, could for do a lot. He's got two, three movies tops. And yes, I'll agree with that. Who's your favorite James Bond? Sean Connery. Fuck you. Wow. I know yours is Roger Moore, and that's just our age differences. Roger Moore is my favorite James Bond because in, in the books, he doesn't like violence. He feels ashamed of the things he's done. So have it, you it, fucking read Casino Royale? I have, but but that was early on in his career. That was uh, Daniel but, Craig probably ties Roger Moore with me because of that movie. Daniel Craig is great. He is every great, other, honestly. Every other movie. Yeah. So we're hoping No Time to Die, which will be which will be released at the end of this year. I'm hoping will be get, will be in line with every other movie he's made. You know, I didn't Skyfall and one. Casino Royale, which are both no. Great. Those are all, those are objectively superior they're, they're to top, the they're top five. next one. Both of them are top yes. five James Bond movies. Hell I'm yeah. not taking anything away from them. They're both terrific. Okay, anyway, but Roger Moore. Roger Moore, uh, my favorite James Hold Bond. on, stop. We have a gastrointestinal bite ring that holds the mouth up and the side from cut, stop something from coming in the air. Instead of cutting the knee ligaments, we simply, simply inject, inject to induce temporary, temporary paralysis. So see, they're not gonna, this is this is good punishment. We have a system the buttocks <laughs> to the person in front of them. We have and leather I, I, straps, and I respect them using the medical term. <laughs> <laughs> well, which I think was the first one that billed itself as a hundred percent medically accurate. It's not. What's your number three? Okay, number movies? three movie. We're getting off track. We are really getting up. We are, this is the alcohol. The longest yard original version, but I like Dude, Adam Sandler. That's a good movie. I love Burt Reynolds. I saw Burt Reynolds at a convention oh. right before he died and he looked terrible and I didn't have like an, an interaction with him other than just like seeing him walk around but he did look really bad however I want to say I want to give a shout out to my buddy Judd Kelly who um, has told this lie for years that he got him to autograph a GameCube an Nintendo GameCube just because and he didn't but the but the the legend of this has persisted, and people who have genuinely gone on to eBay searching for the Nintendo GameCube <laughs> autographed okay. by, by, by him as a, a, like, oh, fuck, it's one of the last things he autographed. I had to have this. And I, I regret the fact that he did not get him to, to actually autograph a GameCube because it makes no sense, therefore it's funny, Number two, he autographed it, therefore it's worth something. But one of his last films um, was the last... Uh, I'm blanking on the title of it. Um, uh, fuck. I'm really We're not drunk. Gonna, we are really drunk. I'm really drunk right now. Anyway, but Burt Reynolds is awesome. Burt Reynolds, rest in peace... You made Gator and Hooper, and for that reason, you did, fuck you, yeah. You will that was ascend, you will ascend to, to fucking Valhalla. What was your number three? Ball, my number three was Stir Crazy. Stir I was Crazy. almost on my. I was like number six. Gene Wilder and Richard Pryor, and, this, yeah. and the single reason that I picked this is the scene where the warden has Gene Wilder ride the mechanical bull <laughs> is so funny <laughs> because it goes on so long, like longer than a normal, like a a, a new movie would have that scene. Yeah. It would be edited to fucking pieces, but they have him ride this for like a good two minutes. So fucking funny. And the whole point of that movie is uh, a rodeo and this prison is had that as uh, kind of their claim to fame. Yeah. And they're having prisoners ride the, the Bucking Broncos for long periods of time. But that movie has Gene Wilder ride this Bunking Bronco the mechanical version yes. for a long period of time and just the way it's edited is so funny and we're seeing the original the original OG Human Centipede they're showing that movie we didn't have cool movie nights when I was in prison the Asian gentleman you're seeing at the, who's the first person of the Human he's Centipede he's got it lucky he's in this movie 
and I can't tell you what number inmate he is. Oh, okay. But he is one of the inmates because there's only like one person who doesn't reappear in the series, and it's one of the females from like the first movie. It's probably the one, the last one, because this is the one in the middle in part two. Maybe I I'm drunk know. right now. I don't know. My number two, number three. Your number two. You just What's your number, number three? three? Yours was oh my number three was longest yard. Okay, number we skipped three. orders. Right, you number, did sir, number so. two. What's your number two? My number two is fucking cool hand Luke, man. How you not gonna have? I'm ashamed of myself that I did not have this. Well, game. what we have here is a failure to communicate. Get the hard boiled eggs out, bitch. That movie is terrific. George really, Kennedy, who won an Academy Award, he did best supporting actor. Paul Newman, Paul who, Newman, who, who's one best of my known, favorite roles. who's best known for his salad dressing. <laughs> <laughs> great, great actor. That's a that's a great movie, but it's about it the really enduring is. human spirit. And fuck the police attitude, because I mean he's not a bad guy. He never does anything bad. He just kind of stays on the wrong side. <laughs> he just doesn't want to conform to society. And throughout the film, like he keeps getting opportunities to be released earlier and earlier. But he's like, no, I'm going to escape. Fuck you. The idea of his autonomy and being the master of his own destiny is the driving force of that narrative. Well, we're talking cool about Hand num- Luke, which is, is seriously on, yeah, on I, this. Like seriously, we talked about our number one and number two being them firmly. If it Dude, were for number one, this would be my number one. I, cool if, Hand Luke. If I had thought about it, Cool Hand Luke would have been on my list. So I give you absolute credit. High my, five. High, High five. My number two, which I have never met a person who hates this movie. I probably know what it's going to be. And that would be the Frank Darabont adaptation of Stephen King's The Shawshank Redemption. What's my number one, bitch? Shawshank Redemption. I, I didn't even see your phone. <laughs> I, didn't see I, your I phone. did them out of order. <laughs> I, like, but there's a one by Shawshank Redemption. Is my, we'll, we'll double dean this. So I don't care what he has as number one. It's wrong. Shawshank Redemption is a perfect movie. Frank Darabont helped Nightmare on Elm Street 3. Fuck you. Andy Dufresne gets raped. <laughs> <laughs> Multiple times, but then, you know, he's like, you know what, put it in my mouth and I'm going to bite it off, bitch. I, that movie, because you never, you never find out whether or not Andy Dufresne No, is, no, the, I, you do find out. If, you don't know if he the is. The other guy laughs and takes it. That's the whole thing. You think he's guilty the whole movie. The whole point of it is he felt guilt because he put her in that situation. Yes, yes, he did. But he didn't kill them. And I will take you out to the parking lot of your apartment complex <laughs> and I will beat you and then I'll ejaculate on you because that's the only way you know you win a fight. I want to shake your hand because <laughs> that's exactly what I would do to you. I mean, that's how you know you win a fight is when you ejaculate into the man, right? That's what my dad said. <laughs> that, it's a great movie. Yes. It's a movie that st- has stand, stood the test of time. You still throw it on. That's good. And, I, and, and I'm being completely serious here. I've never met a person who disliked this movie. Have you ever met a person who disliked no, it? No. No. In prison, we watch this movie. It was on TNT every fucking weekend. That tells you what it, how good it is. Prisoners who are incarcerated in prison are like, hey man, let's watch this prison movie. It's fucking awesome. It's a great movie. What's your number one? That was my number one. What's your number one? My number one is Escape from Alcatraz starring... Oh, God. This is a power fantasy. That was almost. This is a power fantasy. Yeah. Because we don't know if A... There's a lot of evidence that they lived. That they, that we don't know for sure that they they lived or that they even es- escaped to begin with. Mm. Uh, they they may they may have just shout out to last podcast on left. They did like a two parter or I don't know about Alcatraz. And they, they are, go into the evidence pro and con against the. They are the thorn in my side when when we were talking about like what is the best horror podcast, and I say it's the Rants of the Black. It's Rants from the Black Lodge out of but, loyalty, but, but number two, but. 
Last, tying for last number podcast one. podcast on the left because they they do such a wide variety of things. We don't do true crime. We don't want to hear. Oh we're not going to tell you about people that rape and murder. But those those guys are great. They're Shout amazing. out to them. They are they're a fucking dude. Tremendous. They're coming to Charlotte, and I'm really tempted to buy tickets. I love Charlotte. Are they coming to the they amphitheater? Are. Yeah, no, no, no. They're not coming. No, to no, it is the amphitheater. The amphitheater. I love there. We saw Judas Priest and Deep Purple in here. Atlanta, buddy. Did we? Alpharetta. It was, was Alpharetta. That, who did I see at Fox? I went Charlotte? to Ozfest at Charlotte in the amphitheater, but it was it was with Mike Lawson in 04. Fuck you, Mike Lawson. He yeah, we got to see Black Sabbath and Judas Priest on the same stage. He doesn't deserve it because He does. He's a new father. No, you know why he doesn't deserve it? Why? Because I asked him because he was like, I love I love Iron Maiden and they're the best band ever. I'm like, alright man, the only Iron Maiden album I don't own is fucking uh, No uh, Fear of the Dark from 1992. It's the only album I don't have. Can I borrow it and make a copy of it so I can have it in my archive? And he's like, no, but I'm going to take your Jake Roberts DVD. He's grown. I let, me tell you, let me tell you a story that can put me in jail. <laughs> it was about wiping poop because I've told him. He knows. I, I once... Stole his, stole his, I stole his, porch I stole furniture. his porch furniture. And I threw it in the fucking, I threw it in a fucking field because he wouldn't give me my Jake Roberts. And we wiped poop on his, uh, my poop on his door. But you know, I didn't do that. You did that, and I respect you. You so drove much me for it. for it. But he's a new daddy. His son Eric is adorable. Good for him. Good I, for and you. Mike Lawson. Um. I give a tip of the cap for you for being able to uh, procreate and do what any other human being could do. No, but he waited till a reasonable age to do it. Like all him. our friends. Good for him. Good for him. If I have children, I don't know about them. 42. Have a kid at 42. That's a good age. I've got some time. I'm 37. That leaves and, you five years of partying. And I don't, I don't 100% know that I have children, and I'm pretty sure I don't. And I have made great strides. To, to make sure that's happened because of condoms. He has me kick him in the balls every time I come over just to make sure he's infertile. Hey. He's like, hey, bro. You know, hook me up, bro. Do you know what's great about America? Not having children. Fuck you. Th- that's what George Washington lived for. All right. Now, here, here. Okay. We've done our prison movies. All right. Let's do, let's, let's do our body, body horror. horror films. All right. Number five. My number five is Teeth. Oh, that's a good, good pick. It was considered. It would have been like number 10 on mine, but yes. The reason I chose this is this is the only movie that actually ever freaked me out. And the reason it did is that Kenzie, uh, my former girl from Kenzie, who I'm still friends with, by the way. Does she have teeth in her vagina? She doesn't, but she would joke me. It's like, why would you allow me to blow you when you're afraid of teeth in a vagina? It's like, it's different. No, no. It's, it's different because... The mouth is a controlled environment. The vagina is not. Because the man <laughs> is doing... Their submissiveness gives me unless, a huge direction. Unless, the movie unless, the the girl, unless the girl is on top, the man is the one who is dictating the speed and the pulse of of that uh, I boom prefer boom. a girl on top. I'm, a, I'm lazy, but Sarah has, am, no, ri- Sarah has no rhythm. So I always got to be on top. But anyway, I, I digress. But yes, no, I, Teeth is a great choice. It was I love showing the girls that that movie. I, but I want to give a shout out to Kenzie because we watched this in the Black Lodge, and and she was like, "Why is it that you're fine with my mouth, but you're scared of my pussy now?" And it's like. You know what? I don't know. Hey, buddy, don't, don't be scared know. of pussy. I'm here to tell you, it's all safe. <laughs> Kenzie, you let him know your pussy is safe. It was, and it was it was some good stuff. Shout out to your boyfriend. Fuck that motherfucker. I'm sure you're a good dude, but I'm He's gonna not. ride. I'm He's gonna not. ride with my homie Brandon here and He's say, not. "Fuck you." High five. High five. See, I'm loyal. Hey, All right, my hey, number five. Hey, ma- hey, you know what? You know what? That motherfucker. Are we saying never- stuff we don't want to say? <laughs> yes. Online? Yes, we are right now. You okay, know what? That buddy. motherfucker never gave you multiple orgasms. You piece of shit. <laughs> He gives me those two, Kenzie. It's cool. All right, my number five body number horror five. movie is the classic Eli Roth Cabin Fever. I, when you have a finger bang scene with sound effects and it's just in their leg because the body's <laughs> rotting, you're going to be in my top five. That's Jordan Ladd, is it not? 
I don't know. She's the dark haired girl. Oh yeah, no, said, yeah, the dark haired girl. Lad. Oh yeah, so attractive. She could get it. Don't get me wrong. I would fuck the hole in her leg because obviously <laughs> the cells are dead. She's not hurting, but that movie <laughs> fucked me up. Everybody's like, "Oh man, it's so dumb." It's just a, no. You know, I like and even the guy who survived. Who's like, "Fuck you all. I'm out with beer." Bye. Who gets blown away by the redneck cops at the end? That movie is perfect, but that, okay, no, that, that, I always no no hold, stop. Hold, 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 the remakes. That. We're gonna talk remakes because I always defend remakes here in the Black Lodge. The remake of Cabin Fever is one of the worst movies in history. Okay, I want to give a little bit of credit because I am not an Eli Roth fan, but the ending. Oh, it's amazing! The, the ending of Cabin Fever is so good. The whole movie. Because the character you want to see killed, get, get killed, yeah. is killed by unrelated means. It's yes. rednecks who fucking take him out. Blow him away. That's great. Otherwise, I'm not a fan of the film, other than the fact that you get to see Boy Meets World fuck Jordan Ladd, which is great. they're also feeding like a dying kid in the hospital on bunny costume pancakes. And it leads to one of the most fucked up sequels it's, of all time. Oh, which is directed by a gentleman whose name I can't remember. Joe Lynch, David... No. Ty not, West. Not Ty West. Ty West. Ty West, Ty West that? directed that. He also directed... Um, I the, thought Ty West did House of the Devil. No, he he did, but he also directed the sequel. He did Kevin Fever 2. He did Kevin Fever 2, which is about a prom that yes. goes... So it was a movie so bad, so, Evelyn made me stop it when like the girl has the... Like, the unintended of, like miscarriage so I can't finish this movie well I'm sorry she's weak if you want to go to the prom you're going to get fucked you're going to have <laughs> miscarriages at the prom All right. my okay. number four my number, number four. four on body horror movies and this is another female centric body horror film Ginger Snaps that's a good movie now I'm fist gonna, bumps oh, fist bumps on that um, the werewolf genre uh, with the exception of like Frankenstein, is probably the first body horror genre. Yeah, going I'll back to like one. the 30s and 40s. Um, but the reason I chose this is like it's terrifying. That's fucking gross, man. I got a stoma. You have a problem. Thank God. I'm gonna smoke my, my speaking cigar. Spanish. I like that. They just speaking. But the reason that. Uh, that this film Ginger Snaps works is because it's a it's a werewolf movie, but it's also playing on the whole predication of the fear of uh, maturity, and maturity, growing up, um, or more specifically, um, getting your period. Yes, but getting your period, uh, puberty would be the best way to put it. No. And it's only bleeding at your hoo-ha. No, Ginger yes. Snaps, which which was, which was uh, recently uh, Joe yeah, Bob, Joe Bob, um, who gave it a very uh, positive spin. But also uh, shout out to Darcy, who is my love. I love we, you, Darcy. And we will be in together. a non-sexual way. I, I just want to meet you and hold you. <laughs> um, both um, hug you. I think I meant to say that, that sounded. I want to hold you. I want to hold you. That's and I want to hold high. you sexually. Um, no. Um, shout out to them because I I messaged Darcy pretty fairly recently and she was like, "Hey, we're gonna be back in June." And they didn't show up in June, but July. I'm like, "Hey, I'm still waiting." I'm like, "I'm gonna give you free tickets around this area, the Tennessee area." Yeah. And if that's the case, I want to make it. Let it be known that Darcy is my favorite female human being on the planet. And I have to technically say Sarah, but I'm not winking at you. <laughs> no, it's Sarah, but a close number two would be Darcy. She is a, a tremendous human being, and um, you're forgetting I'm I'm totally putting her above my three children. Well, I mean. It's the one what that if, drains my balls by ta- lunch. How many times have they been on the last drive? <laughs> you know, how, how many times have they even watched it? I'll give Evelyn kind of watched one time with Sadie. me. Sadie watched one time with 
I'm going to give a me- no, Sadie's the one that watched Brain Dead, so Sadie gets double credit. Sadie was homesick one day, and I want to watch Brain Dead on. Uh, Which is so good. Frank Handler film. Anyway, what is. We're on number four? Damn, we're only on number four. We got to hurry. This movie's on. What's your From name? Beyond. Oh, that's good. From Beyond. Stuart Directed Gordon. by Sears Gordon. Uh, you got. The, what's the chick's name? Barbara Crampton. Barbara Crampton in leather S and M gear. You got fucking Jeffrey Combs with the weird dog dick out of his head. His pineal gland. Pineal gland thing. That is, and this this list took me. I I honestly stressed over this for an hour and a half. I was having. I had a list of twenty, and I trimmed them down. It would have been so easy just to do the top five. David Cronenberg. David Cronenberg or Stuart Gordon even. Like Reanimator, this didn't hit my list because the dog dick out of the forehead and the slimy professor is humans. They're such easy prey. And um who's the gentleman from uh like Day of the Dead and fucking not Day of the Dead, Dawn of the Dead and uh House Ken Furry. Ken Furry getting eaten by those fucking gnat things and his super tight short oh short jean shorts. I love From Beyond, but my number three okay. is a Frank Henler film called Frankenhooker. I was almost on there too. Frankenhooker is sort of the modern in terms of eighties movies. Uh, equivalent of Bride of Frankenstein. We're going to do a shot to the Bill Murray blurb on the box. That's the only reason I rented that movie It's, it's his, as a child. It's his favorite movie. and the, the, Or at the time was. At the let's time. Real. Well, let's, let's, yeah, let's be honest. It's probably not his film. Now it's Garfield 2. Tell <laughs> the two a kitties. It's guaranteed. Human prison centipede. We're ignoring the movie. This is a body horror movie. Listen, if any true fan messages the the Black Lodge, I'll find a DVD burner. I'll send you a burnt bootleg illegal FBI copy of this movie. Do you know? Okay, Frank Hooker be my number three. Yes. And here's the reasons why. You have exploding hookers. That's hot. You have drugs, crack, and you get gallows humor. It's a, it's, a, it's a, honestly almost a perfect '80s horror comedy of the extreme kind, like Blood Diner and um. Fuck, what's the other one? Thank you for uh, uh, using Blood Diner, uh, Blood Diner, Blood Diner as a reference. As a reference, because it's a horror comedy. I fucking love that movie. There's, I can't remember if it's Tales from the Crypt or if it's uh, Tales from the Dark Side. There's a Christopher Reeve episode. Tales from the Crypt where they the have the diner and they eat the human flesh. Yeah. And no, that's definitely Tales from the Crypt because I was even talking. This is weird. You're in my head, dude. We're soul brothers. <laughs> I was talking about that episode with Sarah the other day, talking about Christopher Reeve. I'm like, oh, my favorite thing he did. Besides, like, the original Superman 1 and 2. Superman chopped up babies! <laughs> What's well, Tales from the Crypt? That's one of my... That's in my top ten favorite episodes. That's a whole other thing. My number three... Tell me body me. horror... Society. I love society. How are you not gonna... Would you rip a rich asshole out from his mouth from his anus... Like at the end when he goes up through and rips him through, and the the head in the asshole and the edible complex jokes is one of the best body horror movies ever. I'm going to agree with you, but I'm a whole on a table society. My number two is Videodrome, directed by the great David Cronenberg. David Cronenberg. The idea of pulling a beta tape out of your belly vagina and having your hand fuse with a gun, creating a literal hand gun. That Don't talk too much about so this. So good. But yes. Okay. So we're on the number two now? Well, that would be my, my number two. Yes. That was your number two? Yeah, okay, yeah, we're doing that. Slither, James Gunn. Great movie. Everybody's superhero hero. <laughs> we knew him from Tromeo and Juliet. We knew him from, uh, fuck, what's the ring? Listen to Super. Great movie. Sid, like, it made me cry twice, like, tears out of my eyes. Um, but, uh, Slither is one of the best body horror fun, and it has some CGI, but it uses a lot of practical effects. 
It's one of my favorite fun comedy horror movies of all time. What's your number one? My number one is Society. Oh, see, my number one is Videodrome. The reason I've shown <laughs> shows in Society over Videodrome is... You say you're wrong. Which is, <laughs> your penis is it, smaller than mine. It, it's, it's directed by video uh, by the um, Brian Usner. Who did that cool-ass interview with you, man? That yes, we had him on the podcast. I am only attracted to women now who have both tits... On their front and their back because of this because of this movie, I can only achieve an erection because of this. And I love Videodrome. Videodrome was uh, absolutely my number two. And I'm assuming it's your number one. Yeah, no, but Videodrome is my number one body horror movie of all time. You have James Wood. I don't care about his political opinions. They're very anti against mine. But he's whipping a TV that with Davy Harry embodied in it, having S in it. He's having weird S in him sex with a wooden boxed old school Debbie TV. Debbie Harry during could that time fucking get it. She was the most attractive woman she's on the like planet. She's like hurting her titties. Like, I'm like, she is that her, a thing? She burns her tits. My little wee-wee was all hard. <laughs> At the time I saw this, it wasn't a penis. It was a wee-wee. She burned her tit with a cigarette, and I have to say that that left an indelible mark on me. Much like probably the people who saw this film, oh, Human Centipede There's Three, somebody who gets time. hard at shooting prisoners in their cell. Like, Tom Six, who's supposed to be a real character in the real world, is just totally cool with a dude shooting another man locked up in a prison. Well, I mean... We've not talked about the movie in a while. Listen, I don't care if you have to go on eBay. I think this might be available for purchase on Amazon Prime. It is on Prime. I'm amazed Tubi doesn't show it, because Tubi shows all the weird... They do, but you gotta pay for it. This movie, this movie is protected because you had it's it's hidden the, behind a paywall because pay, it's only had, for the best of the best. <laughs> this is a movie. Um, Look at that butthole! <laughs> it's a bloody butthole on screen, and they're, they're just sponging. And he's so happy. Look at that bloody butthole! The German man said, I'm really, "Bill Boss." I'm really a yeah, Bill Boss. I'm really unhappy that he passed away. He passed away from cancer. Which has been a just a fucking terrible thing that has affected both your and like my, my actual father, Ronnie James Dio, and now Bill. Your, fa- Boss. your father is Ronnie James. Dio. No, my father uh, and, and Ronnie James Dio. But like back to back. Roger, listen, listen. In all sincerity, Roger Mefford, great guy. Um, uh, I'm the only person I know that had a great biological father in their life growing up. I really like. I we saw the Eighteen movie. I didn't want to go see. But he begged me to go see it, and I was genuinely sad that none of my friends had that experience. Your biological father was much better than mine. He was still alive, but one day he'll die, and we'll look forward to that. Let's go sell him ass to mouth to somebody. But your father, Roger Mefford, was always so nice to me. And, I, and I've seen your father in his under his tidy whities more. A times. lot of people have. He <laughs> more times care. than I ever. When wanted. you're swinging like nine inches of man meat, like the soft, you're gonna go wear tidy white. We're gonna do a shot to Roger Mefford right now. Come on, I know you don't want to. You're. I'm fucking. I'm. You're beyond, soft. I'm beyond drunk right now. I'm gonna do a half a shot to your father. You're going to do a gonna, fucking shot to my do, dad. I will do a full shot to your dad. In two Both parts. half shots have to... Okay, that's fine. I'll, I'll accept that. This motherfucker doing half shots to my dad. I'm really fucking... I'm okay. really fucking drunk. We've right gone now. through two pints almost of Taco 100. What the hell is this as he sees severed lambs? Let's talk about our additional cast. Uh, so we have Eric Roberts as <coughs> Governor Hughes. He's had a long career from the A list to the B list and everything in and between. And C and D, let's be. <coughs> uh, Polk of, Polk of <coughs> Greenwich Village. He was in Runaway Train where he was nominated for an Academy Award. And shout out to our buddy Mick Strawn. McStrawn! I love you, dude. Who worked on the production (sighs) of that movie. One of two Academy Award-nominated films he worked on that I'm aware of off the top of my head. 
Um, he was General Bukaki in Chillerama, which is a movie we both fucking love. I love that movie. Which is directed by a, <coughs> a cavalcade. Adam of, Green, who is the inspiration Green. of the podcast. Avil, uh, uh, Adam Joe, Green, Lynch, Joe Lynch, who is friend of the podcast. Um, what's the other guy who did like House of a Thousand? Qu- no, no, uh, Thousand One. Fuck, you know what I'm saying? But the Civil did. War dead. He did the fucking <coughs> movie of Burt Reynolds. Um, fuck, I can't think of his name. And uh, either way, and he did uh, that uh, the werewolf, gay werewolf dude, movie. like the fucking Tom Su- Tim Sullivan. Yes, that was an awesome one. Uh, like it was a gay werewolf musical, <coughs> which made that ten times better. Like it had played as a straight non musical. No. Look, he's he, drunk. He's still. This is the same afternoon. They just changed the lighting arrangement behind the window where Eric Robert comes in. Um, a little bit uh, of uh, <clears throat> back to our um, Eric Roberts uh, member of the cast. He was in a little known movie last year, twenty twenty, called Welcome Home, which is about soldiers with PTSD. Welcome Home is about soldiers with PTSD. PTSD, as you just said, yes, and. Um, he plays a character named Gunner Hansen. Whoa! Exactly. <coughs> now, I can't 100% say that he was named after the Gunner Hansen. But How he, do you not? But he is a Gunner Hansen. So I thought it was uh, interesting to be let be known that he played Gunner Hansen, who, to the horror faithful, was the original Leatherface in the 1974... My all-time favorite horror movie of all time. It's it's up there for me. It's up there for me. And shout-out to our friends at Central Cinema who are showing a triple feature. I saw that preview, and I... The the cool thing about... If I win the lottery tomorrow tomorrow night or tonight, if I've won the lottery with the ticket I have, I'll go see it. Our buddy Nick Strong's going to be there. He did the production design. He's been on an episode of our podcast. I'm not saying I want to blow him, but I'd hold his nuts in my hand. (laughs) He's He's earned that. He has. He's earned a couple strokes. I mean, yeah, I'm down. Mick... I'm sorry I'm speaking so horribly, but no, seriously, like, his interviews earlier before our amazing episodes. Uh, Listen, <clears throat> Mick, Mick has been there since uh, the turning point for this podcast. He did our Not Maryland Street 4 episode, which is still one of our most listened to episodes. Wait, who did, who'd you do that with? With you. The Emperor of Ethanol, Fat Tony. <laughs> Here, hold on, hold on, stop. This is the first time Governor Eric Roberts sees 500 prisoners sewn together ass to mouth. And this is what's going to get him elected as president. As president, what the hell? Look, I, I like the how they had to fit him. The Black Panther made it to the lead. That's what Bill said. The burger killer is feeding the whole human humanitarian system. Out. Don't cry. Tomorrow, you get your hamburgers. So, among these, like, 500-plus people we have <sighs> in the human centipede, one of them is the secretary, Brie Olson. So, do you, Wait, is she? She is one of them. Yes, you'll see it uh, probably later on. Maybe it's already happened. I'm not hurt. No, this is the initial first thing. But she was sewn up in there. Well, sir. Uh, not intentionally, but she ends up in the human centipede. She's the one female in there. I mean, so let me tell you. I'll be so to her, but so let me tell you a little no. story about about her. She is in a film called Fat Chance, which you can find on social media or streaming as Camp Massacre, the much less positive uh, title for this film. You can find it on Tubi and probably on Amazon Prime. I'm not 100 percent sure. Um. But my friend, a friend of the podcast, Matt Scott, uh, who owns Von Grimm Productions, he has this uh, this group and a company that he builds uh, props for other companies. Works for a company called Animax. They do things for Disney and on down the line. So it's not halal. It's not kosher. 
A Jew yeah. behind a Muslim, a Muslim, Muslim behind, behind a Jew. Jew. <laughs> a Republican behind a Max, a crit behind a blood. You know, this is the He's this bringing, is the this is the future the liberal left want us to have. He's bringing the world together. He is. He's, He's woke. But uh, hashtag woke. <laughs> hashtag woke. Back to our, our book, yes. Um, mascot. Sure. mascot. Mascot. Mascot's awesome. Mascot, one of my uh, dear friends, I used to work with him for years at Ripley's Haunted Adventure. He's one of your few friends I've actually had personal interaction with. So. And he went on to bigger and better things. Wieners. Wieners. <laughs> he, worked yeah. on, he worked on a film called Fat Chance, which has, has since been released as Camp, Camp Massacre, Massacre, which is a shit title, because the idea of the film is that it's fat people... Going to a camp and losing weight, kind of like The Biggest Loser, but it's a movie. And in this movie, there's uh, that uh, fat camp movie with Ben Stiller. Oh, heavyweights. Heavyweights. That but horror. That but horror. Okay, that's a better so comparison. A, he he made this film. There she is. There she is. Suck it on that dude's butt. That's hot. It makes my wiener hard. It doesn't. But in this I don't film, like play. in this film you, you can find called Camp Mass Massacre. She has a small role. Yes. Now my buddy Matt Scott did the special effects, or was one of the the crew that worked he was on there. Effects. And during the film, she is a one hundred percent like vegan, like Ew. does not agree with like the consumption of meat. Ew. Now during the film, she she has a shower scene, and they throw like fucking like entrails and shit on her, like legit, like, like from, real, like like Tom Savini old school shit, old school shit. And she was like, "I'm mad at you." Because you threw fucking meat at me. And she like threw up on set and stuff. But our friend Matt got to see Brie Olsen in her prime. Like, I mean, like, prime. Fucking moments after, like, her affair with Charlie Sheen and. and Pretty and realize she's stuff. riddled with AIDS. Well, she may not be. We don't know. I don't know. But she very easily could have been. Thank you, Charlie Sheen, you piece of shit. God. I'm more of an Emilio Estevez fan. You know... He was in Young Guns. Fist bumps to Emilio. <laughs> Emilio Estevez. But he kept the name real. You know, he kept the name real because of his father, who was in Apocalypse Now, which is one of the best films ever made. Yeah. Charlie Sheen was in uh, was in Hot Shots. Charlie Sheen was in Platoon. If we're going to rank Charlie Pl- non-movies, that'd be number two or three. So yeah. let's not get too cocky. He's good. He's good. But he was, he was in Hot Shots 1 and 2. And the, which are the amazing. Which are good. Better than any of the prior movies you well, discussed. Which are, not, which are not as good as uh, Naked Gun 1 or Maybe two. You're comparing better, naked, better, you're comparing cop films to war films. They're for made by war the, satire movies made by the same people. The Zucker, I think it was only one of the Zucker brothers. I don't it. care how many Zucker. David were Zucker. <laughs> See, this is where he, I get to be the king of, of random knowledge, comedy parody movies. But anyway, no. Emilio, the, fir- the awesome. first one's great because it's like a uh, don't get Brie a, Olsen AIDS, man. Is what we're trying to say, which we don't know. We, no, we don't. And we he, don't know one hundred percent. But Brie Olsen, a very attractive young lady, and I look a fart out of her butthole. You know, and as an American, that's it's not required. cheating if it's only no, looking a fart out of her butthole because you love America. I love America, and as a, an American, I can respect that. Now, if you if you live in one of these countries, this like is North, way more off the rails North, than our rock and roll zombies. <laughs> We're so drunk right now. As as an American, and no no disrespect intended to Canada or or uh, South America, Mexico, and so on. Yes. Um, Any other American Brie Olsen, continent? Brie Olsen did this for America. She, she did. Didn't, she didn't do this for Mexico, so by default, we have to imagine that we're better than you. We are, but I'm going to give a shout out. I'm going to rip on Brandon for a second and, rip on and give a shout out to my uh, stepdaughter, Sadie. Yeah, I'm just going to say daughter because her biological sperm donor is a piece of shit. Probably, um, yeah, no, no, sure. not probably. Is well, I mean, in theory, she's like, we gotta watch Snake Eyes. 
Okay. Yeah, that's right. We're the, no, she wants to watch a G.I. Joe-based film based on the Asian-centric origin of Snake Eyes. And Snake Eyes in the Is a white book. blonde guy who the creators and owners of that IP have now decided... Well, if you threw enough money at me, I'd be willing to th- to, to forego I'll some of my I'll give you $20. Things. Look at my balls. But no, here, uh, no. here's the thing. I love... I love G.I. Joe. Honest, he it's, has tattoos of G.I. Joe do, on um, him. On my fucking uh, uh, right but arm. But the best parts of the sequel movie to the original shit movie no, I don't want those were... Movies. No, no, they're, no, I'm not saying they're good, but the best parts are the Snake Eyes, RZA, Kung Fu movie interludes. Tell me I'm wrong. You're you're not wrong, but as a fan of the comic book, which was my favorite comic book growing up, the G.I. Joe series has I'm telling been her brutalized. in real time, I just gave her a shout out on the podcast. All right, well, uh, congratulations, Sadie. I hope you download the podcast if you don't. Oh, I'll make them. They, <laughs> they don't get options, too. Um, we're, we're, I grabbed their phone. We're, we're at the end of the movie we're where he thinks he's failed. That, um, the governor Dieter, comes... Dieter Lasser is going to commit suicide, but guess what? No, he's just going to kill his uh, short, chubby friend, and then he's going to get naked and declare... It's going to get sexy therapy. up in here. Okay, seriously, if you gotta pay money for this movie to watch on Amazon... Please don't. No, no, please do, and if you send me a naked picture of your genitalia, I'll send you, on Messenger, Anthony Mefford on Messenger, I have to see your vagina, only vaginas, I'll send you half the price of the movie. I'm saying this out. He just shot that doctor. I won't. But because I love my my Sarah, I'll do it to one of... uh, of, If multiple people do it, the first one that does it gets half the price of this movie on Amazon. Then mode to them. If you can be the first, you have the right to be the last. Exactly. So Dieter Lasser has shot... The doctor. Excuse me. He's shot, he shot the doctor, and he's he's about to undo him, and this will lead us into what should be or what was in uh, excuse me intended as be a double. I'm really drunk right now. Uh yes, I am too. Intended as a double suicide, but guess what? Only one of them actually kills himself. I don't think anybody actually kills him. Doesn't he, he kill him? He does kill him, but he's. He, How do you remember that? Like I've, I've watched this movie once more since me and you watched it. The, here's the governor. Hey guys, this is the future of the American penal system. And you know what? If the threat of eating shit out of a sewn up asshole in front of my mouth were the cause of crimes, I wouldn't have robbed that bank. Whose younger, exactly s- hot sister was the teller? Um, Tiny Lister plays. <laughs> yeah, I love how he tries to divert. Them. <laughs> and we have Robert Lasardo who plays two ninety seven. He's the one who fucked. This may in, give me in, elected in the, the president. Drink. You've convinced me it's genius. My pals in DC. And he cries and he still had. Don't change a goddamn thing. Sorry, sir. I know you hate GD, even though you're atheist. <laughs> She I does. Am, she hates the 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 god the word goddamn, even though she's atheist because of her mammal and her love for her mammal. I have the fucking hiccups right now. You know, dudes. Oh, uh, read us the reviews. Go we're gonna, I'm gonna re- hold on. I since you shitting on Snake Eyes, I, I sent a. I gave you just gave you a shout out on the podcast. I love you and agree to say you should like. Ha ha. Yes, I love you too. I'm going to read some reviews that Brandon sent me. These are both and hilarious, I wanted, by the I way. wanted to read these first sober so I could actually read them. But I'm drunk, so you just have to deal. Review. An absolutely brilliant masterpiece. Masterpiece. I watched this with my five daughters, all six years old, in the first grade, every single night before bed. Puts the kiddos right to sleep. In fact... 
Instead of lullabies or stories, I simply rotate the human centipede series. In addition to helping out with her kids, my wife and her boyfriend also adore this film. And sometimes the three of us will see it together. I would absolutely recommend this film to anyone with small children or a fear of anything, Corey. This family friendly crowd pleaser doesn't need a gore when it has such an amazing plot and character development. Brian Rettig. Here's the next one. Oh my god, I'm so drunk. I couldn't even. Im- um, hey, listen, movie, I'm going to give career. you some behind the baseball. This motherfucker recorded another Rans After Dark without me. It will <laughs> not be as good as this one, I guarantee it. It's our, it's our next one. Death yeah. Three. I'll fuck you, fat fuck shot. I, you know, I'd, I'd give you a hand job. I love you. My boys goob and party freaking love this movie. They are 10 and they want to take it to school, but it's our only DVD. They are still in first grade after years. Ugh. They need to pass this year. We nuke some weenies and heat up some value time ketchup and watch it every night. And they watch it while eating their weenies for breakfast, too. Tonight, I'm going to make sugar water pudding for dessert, and we are going to watch it again. My dealer brought by something, and we will smoke a little something first. Yay! Goob and Par both like sugar water and pudding. But we don't get to make it too often now because we lost some of our our food stamps. Uh, Thanks to that F. Trump, Job Duckwar. I think his name is Joe, but that's all. No, yeah, Joe. Okay, we've missed seeing the movie. He created what he wanted. He created a paradise on Earth where you take the worst of the worst. You stitch them in with the baddest of the bad, and you level out to a utopian society of, um, like, okay, honestly, I don't see this working past five people. You got to do a bunch of, like, little change and sequences of five people who shit into the next person's mouth. All right, I have have some fan questions. This motherfucker. Pitch me an idea for Human Centipede 4. Forward. This comes from Derek Adams. Get an and idea. No, I have the the pitch. Not a prison sentence. Not anything. It's a the new hot Hollywood diet that only the elite of the elite can do. It's a Hollywood diet cult. Tell me I'm wrong. So my idea. You remember Hands Across America? Hands Across America. Thank you, Jordan Peele. For the best reminder that that existed so in it, us. It's not an idea, but um, Eric Roberts has now become president. Oh, my God. And we have the 2021 or 2022 equivalent this of This motherfucker's that. drunk. I am so drunk right now. I love my boy Brandon. I'm so drunk that I'm, like, hiccuping drunkenness. Anyway, Hands Across America. Hands Across America, and we have... Uh, but because Dieter Lasser is dead, we have this role played by the incredible Tommy Wiseau. <laughs> oh, I cut a little hard just now. And we uh, extend extend that to um, Hands Across America. So that's uh, Human Centipede 4. No, I think it needs to be some separate thing where it needs to be a diet. Well, anyway, anything with Tommy, you're going to catch me with Tommy Wiseau. That's my kryptonite. You can say, I want Tommy Wiseau in a remake of Schindler's List. And I'll be like, <laughs> yes, that's amazing. He yeah. needs to play the Ray Fiennes part. Can you imagine Tommy Wiseau as the villain of a fucking concentration camp? Uh, I did not shoot her. Schindler, I did not. I did not. <laughs> If you could, if it's possible to be the, both the hero and the villain of the same piece, hey man, you what? There's been movies green screen before. Uh, this question comes from Tina Lewis. Hi Tina. What are some of your favorite um, YouTube comments or YouTube content? My YouTube, I love Movie Bob. 
that Brandon put me on, uh, he's like, usually I agree with him. Almost perfectly. I remember a cure for wellness. He's like, 50% of you are going to love this and 50% of you are going to find this disgusting. I went to see this with my fiance, Sarah. She was horrified at how it turned out. And I was like, oh my God, yes, this movie's going there. Uh, also, I like um, Wisecrack. They view like pop culture through a philosophical lens. What's Brandon's answer? Uh, red snuff le- porn. Yes, snuff porn. <laughs> red letter media. They oh, do, yeah, dude. They do a, a thing called best of the worst. And the whole idea of our uh, Rants After Dark is predicated on the next episode being chosen. We're sucking chosen, their dick. Chosen by random chance. He has, so, an, he has an app for it. I've seen it. So, shout out to... Uh, Tony and Newt from um, Hack the Movies. They've given us some love, so we got to give it back to them. I love you. Uh, Lee McCoy, uh, he does dr- Drum Dums. Ralph Seppi, uh, who's Ralph the Movie Maker. Retro bla- uh, Blasting. This motherfucker's uh, uh, Olivia, uh, Olivia. Uh, Oliver Harper, who does awesome film retrospectives, just to name a few. Uh, this question comes from Johnny Ellis. Manhunter or Red Dragon? Manhunter. I'm also going to choose Manhunter. I mean, I'd like, honestly, and this is where we're going to separate. Ray Fiennes is the better villain, but the movie Manhunter is a better movie. I love Manhunter. It's Manhunter's actually- fucking great. I remember seeing Silas- it back in church school. Church school. My buddy's like, I bet, he, I bet you didn't know Silence of the Lambs was a sequel. And we were in Manhunter. <sighs> and we had to wait till sundown on Saturday night to watch it because fuck religion. We both love Silence of the Lambs, but Manhunter is really good. It's my favorite, actually, of the trilogy. Uh, actually, at this point, it's probably a quadrilogy. Quadrilogy. Motherfucker, I've got the hiccups right now. I mean, if you read the books, my favorite is honestly Hannibal. Hannibal goes. Hannibal has Clarice and Hannibal in love yeah. in Brazil in a relationship. The book. That does not happen in the movie. No, I'm but saying the at, book. The book. For the movie go. adaptations. All right. Um, this yeah. comes from Johnny Ellis. Who would it went in a fight between <laughs> this motherfucker, dude? Leprechaun and Chucky? Leprechaun. He has magical powers. Aside from just random voodoo shit that Chucky has, like he can manipulate the reality around him. Leprechaun. I, it, it, to, to your point, I'm going to agree with that. Yeah, I mean, you have to, because we're both men of class and taste. Do I need to read these for you? You're hiccuping really bad. I have the fucking hiccup. I will read these for you, buddy. We're we're down to our last question. Before we close out this episode, we have to spin the wheel to figure out what our next episode is going to be. So let's spin the wheel now. (laughs) And our next episode is going to be Death Wish 3. Fuck. So, so stay, That's the one I, I said I wasn't going to do. Stay tuned. April 15th, which is going to be an episode with me and Fat Fuck Scott. <laughs> Fuck you, Fat Fuck Scott. <laughs> You're not better than me. But I love you, we, too. We, we, we love you, you fat piece of shit. You I are. think I'm going to close this out for another month. Please follow us on so- social media at Rance Black Lodge. Subscribe to the Rance Black Lodge podcast on one of the m- many platforms we're av- available on, including uh, Spotify and a- Apple Podcasts. Yes. Hey, I'm interrupting my buddy here. And also check him out for his other really entertaining podcast, Wrestling Bruined. It, like it's really fun. Like I've been listening to it more and more, even though his co-hosts are lesser than me. And you can tell them to look them in their eyes when I say that Anthony says you're lesser than. Well, he that's is. why you would be more of a champion than they'll ever. Be. I am more of a champion, and you know what? Only one hundred percent white. A bald eagle blood flows through your veins. <laughs> Fuck you, Travis, forever indicating my bro here is from Canada. I am 100% American. I'll rape you on Mike. <laughs> no, I'm just playing. Buy a t-shirt or mug from Marvel. Seriously, I'm wearing one right now. Rantarmy.com. 
www.juicykruger.com. And don't forget to stop by our homepage at juicykruger.com. Join us August 1st as we will celebrate our four-year anniversary. I'm so excited, and I will rate Brandon to death (laughs) if if he does this without me. Till then, Rant Army, keep marching.